Hello all my Canvians and welcome to a brand new episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Today the episode I'm going to be watching is The Eaters of Light, the 10th episode of the 10th series of Doctor Who, or the new Doctor Who rather. And in light of any more light puns, as I did at the end of, were they even puns? They were just awkward jokes really. But at the end of the previous video, let's just get right into The Eaters of Light and then we will talk about it afterward. Yes, just right to the point today. <laughs> oh, and just so you know, yes, I do have a video producing in the back. It is the full version of one of the next Discovering Steven Universe videos. <gasps> Gasp. Anyway, <laughs> let's begin and go. Hmm. Speaking as a former first of virtual second class, I can assure you, there is a Roman legion I love Bill so much. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, there are elements of her, not exactly the same, but elements of her that remind me of Donna so much, and that's one of the reasons I love her. <laughs> oh, that's glorious. Oh, he's dead. Or is going to be. Lizardish creature? <laughs> Apologies for any background noise, apparently someone's vacuuming. Bunch of fishies slash uh, light eaters. Slash dragons. Always gotta love it when the doctor has that smile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you not for ages? I'm getting ever so worried. But you'll never learn to hear the music. Hmm. It's a rainbow. Sorry. Hmm. 
Okay, before no 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 not gonna see what happens next time. Seriously, I hate it when it does that. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I do believe it is time to have a little chat about this episode, don't you? And I sincerely apologize to anyone and everyone that has a British or Scottish or otherwise accent uh, that I horribly failed to imitate <laughs> at a few points during this video. But, you know, that's me. But, ah. Uh, you know what? I, I wrote down quite a few favorite parts here. And uh, let's get right into them. So, starting with my favorite parts of this episode. And admittedly, they're a little bit out of order because I was kind of like typing sideways. <laughs> but, one of my first favorite parts about this episode is the fact that Bill just figured out the whole translating deal on her own. Like, whenever it's happened before, whenever the companion kind of noticed, it was explained by the Doctor. This is one of the few times where, you know, they noticed it, and the Doctor wasn't around, or maybe the only time. And so, yeah, I mean, Bill just kind of just made educated guesses, and she was right on the ball. It was the Doctor and, well, primarily the TARDIS, but also the Doctor, you know, since the TARDIS is there. But yeah, I, I absolutely love the fact that Bill figured that out all on her own. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, that's part of what I love about her so much. She's a very independent character. She she has those elements of Donna that I loved so much. In some ways, I might like her a little... Well, I, I wouldn't say I like her more than Donna. Donna is just a character that I hold very close to my heart. But it's just as a character overall, she's one of the best, in my opinion, by far. Now, one of my next favorite parts is the fact that all of the surviving Picts and the surviving Romans were kids, essentially. Um, oh, I mean, um, unless you don't count, you know, the 18-year-old uh, Roman, whose name I'm forgetting now, but um, the one they called Granddad. I love the fact that they had it that way, that it was the youth of the Picts, the youth of the Romans, or the surviving Roman legion, uh, that were really the main characters here, uh, other than, you know, the Doctor and Bill and Nardal. I really like the fact that they did that way. It had a lot to do with the whole theme of, you know, destiny and growing up. I just, I, I really like that they did that. Um. One of my next favorite parts was the modern mindset and just the, that discussion with uh, with the Romans, basically, that Bill had. And, and the fact that um, the idea that Bill would only prefer women, I, I found it kind of funny that uh, the, the granddad character, I hate that I can't remember his name, um, it referred to that as being restrictive. <laughs> I just, again, I just, I found that really interesting because I, I, when the topic was brought up, I was rather curious how they would portray that, but it, it really goes along with a lot of the things that I remember from history in that the Romans were, in a lot of ways, a very, or a, a more open-minded uh, civilization. At least as far as, you know, relations and stuff like that goes. So, I, I really like that they portrayed that. My next favorite part of this episode was the design of the Eaters of Light. And, yeah, I don't know, it's it wasn't super original, admittedly, but they, it seemed to me like they went for a very dragon-like portrayal. And it really worked, in my opinion. Uh, you know, not massive giant dragons, but sort of like, you know, smaller ones, <laughs> I, I guess from what you would compare to just a dragon like Smog and others, but it, just the overall design of the Eaters of Light, that when they were in their own dimension, and swimming around, so to speak, they had a very fluid fish-like element to them, 
but you know when on land the the eater of light again it was it was very dragon like it was uh, a, a, a lizard shall we say so yeah I really enjoy that element of it and my next favorite part of this episode is really one that kind of calls back to the almost very beginning right after the credits and that's Bill and the doctor's little competition <laughs> there it's like Bill's going to find at, at least one of the Roman Legion and the doctor's saying that he knows what happened that you know they never survived and just the, the way that resolves in the end I, I really enjoyed it um, and then Bill in the end says it's like no they were both basically both wrong which in a way they were both right and wrong like the, the Roman Legion was wiped out. Uh, Bill did find some survivors, but in the end, they didn't really survive. They're fighting eternally, so to speak. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I really like that whole little competition aspect, and that feeds in more to the whole uh, way that Bill is a very independent character. And I really enjoy that about her. My next favorite part was just the way that it resolved with uh, the kids, um, what was her name, Carr, and uh, a few other Picts that followed her in, and then the remaining uh, members of the Roman Legion, the Ninth Legion, uh, going in and meeting their destiny. It was like Carr was meeting her destiny, and that became their destiny as well, to fight till the end. And I just really like the way that worked out and, and that also plays into like meeting their destiny but also that explanation of why crows say Ka which I guess I said her name is car earlier which is a vehicle but the way it's pronounced Ka or whatever I'm horrible at pronouncing things but the fact that the crows are remembering her uh, again that's just one of those elements that I really really like and then my final favorite part of this episode was Missy. And I, I guess you could say by association, Missy and the Doctor. I, I, I love the way that Michelle Gomez portrays, I, I, I think that's her name. Pretty sure that's the right, pretty sure that's her name. Um, but the way she portrays this character and while the, the previous episode, I felt like it ended rather awkwardly and hard to believe, the way that this episode ended with uh, Missy crying and the way she's interacting with the Doctor, it feels real. Like, it feels like, instead of that kind of strange, awkward moment, that there's legitimate trying here. Like, Missy is truly trying to change and well obviously by that means the master is changing and I just absolutely love the way that's working out and I'm interested to see what happens with them as these last few episodes go along I'm interested to see how she might further evolve as a character um, does this mean that in the future the master might be a good guy, or at the very least, maybe an anti-hero, <laughs> so to speak. So yeah, I'm. I, I just really like that. Um, yeah. So those were my favorite parts. As far as annoyances go, I only really had one, and it's. They're talking about how the. The Eater of Light was not, or the, the, the monster, it was, it was weak, but at the same, it, it, or rather it was, uh, it was weak, but it was becoming strong enough to feed, but it literally just fed on all of these Roman soldiers, so wouldn't that have made it still rather strong? I don't know, it just seemed like there was some slight inconsistencies there. Uh, I, I understand the fact that, you know, it being in the sunlight restores it to its full, or brings it toward its full strength. Since I guess it took a couple days to do so. But, yeah, I just... 
it, it felt like that was a little bit inconsistent, especially considering the fact that a couple of days transpired without, and it didn't seem to really start to become or get near its full strength until the, the final day or those final couple of days after the doctor had been in the portal for apparently two days. Yeah, I just found that rather, again, I just found it rather inconsistent. But overall, that's the only real issue I had with this episode. So yeah, I, I, I really liked that. Uh, overall, I, I really liked it if you balance out my favorites versus uh, my annoyances. Now, as for a track of the episode, I honestly have to say the, I guess you would call it the battle music. Um, but uh, the music that uh, the Picts were playing, one, when uh, they were going into the dimensional portal thing and then also the uh you know that remaining i guess eternal song that plays while they're fighting the fight i just found that to be really excellent I, I, it's very simple and it sounded you know overall very traditional i don't know if it maybe was sort of a traditional song they were playing or if it's something that was made up for the show but overall i, I really liked it um, aside from that, moving on, uh, I have a couple of quotes of the episode, one of which is an actual quote, and then one is just, you know, the idea of a quote. <laughs> the first of which is when the soldiers were saying that uh, Bill was calling them cowards, and, you know, she said, no, is that, you're not cowards, you're scared, and that's okay. And the quote I liked is, scared is human. And... I like that for a few reasons. One, it's true, and it's a clear comparison. Uh, it's a it's a good portrayal of the idea that being scared doesn't make you a coward. Um, I feel like a lot of people, especially in today's age, that if you're scared, you're considered a coward. But it's not true. Being scared is part of the human element. If you're not scared, then there's something wrong. And I also feel like that's something that the doctor himself has said. I don't know, I can't remember if it's something he might have said earlier this season and sort of Bill was recalling that or if it's um, something he said in the past and it was uh, just more of a reference to that. But overall, I again, it's like that's a really good quote in my opinion. And then the doctor's monologue when he's addressing uh, the Picts and the remaining Romans uh, just telling them that they need to grow up and I, I'm <laughs> pretty much any doctor monologue from the doctor is going to be excellent in my opinion but I really like this one it really suited the whole situation and it was very inspiring and it honestly gave me some chills so there you go <laughs> um, as for I guess a theory I didn't write this down but I think my theory is going to be that Missy actually is making a turn for the side of good. Again, whether that means she'll actually be a good guy going forward or sort of an anti-hero, shall we say, I, I don't know. But she's definitely steering more toward the side of good. <laughs> I was just uh, kind of recalling that conversation she had with Clara. It's like, no, I didn't turn good. I apologize again for destroying people's accents. <laughs> but yeah, um, and taking all that into one, overall, I really liked this episode. And I addressed this in the beginning of the reaction, but I know this episode was written by one of the classic era writers, and this was, uh, she originally wrote the, um, the final series for the classic era of Doctor Who. And the fact that she's not only the, well, th not only is this her first one being back as a part of the show, hopefully she'll do more in the future, considering the quality of the writing in this one, in my opinion, but also she's the first of the classic era writers 
at all to be back. So I, 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 I really appreciate that. And I hope that they bring in more of the classic era writers if they're going to be of this kind of quality. This was definitely a very strong, well done story in my opinion. So yeah, all kinds of thumbs up for me on this one. I'm really interested to hear what you all might have to say about this episode. You know, what do you think about what I, what, you know, my thoughts as far as favorites and annoyances go? Were there any other tracks that you liked? Uh, or uh, in, even any other quotes that you might prefer? I'd, I'd love to hear what you all think, as always. So, yeah, that's all I have to say about The Eaters of Light. And next time, I'm going to be watching World Enough and Time, which admittedly is a strange... Um, yeah, kind of a, kind of a strange title. Uh, World Enough in Time. Just, yeah, it just uh, seems a little bit awkward to me, so I'm interested to see what the episode itself will be like. But, yeah, that's all I have to say about this episode. Everyone, thank you very much for being here for this episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Uh, if you would like to see, or if you're watching the edited version here on YouTube, um, you can find the full version of the reaction in the description down below, a link to that. Uh, if you would like to watch not only other episodes like this, but the extended versions early, uh, you can go over to my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. You can become a patron to the channel and uh, watch these episodes. as I up, uh, After I've uploaded them, I add them to the Patreon and they will be available for you to view. We'll have several more episodes coming up here soon, including uh, you know upcoming episodes of Discovering Doctor Who and Discovering Steven Universe and uh, any other videos I might be putting out. So I'll end it there. Th again, thank you all very much for being here. And until next time, for World Enough in Time, I'm Papa Ken, and I will see you in the next episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Allons-y!